Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. And yes, we are a Pokemon trainer. Let's go ahead and talk to this purple laden lad. We do not have a Poketch, short for Pokemon Watch, which Pokemon is short for Pocket Monster, so it's Pocket Monster's Watch. A rare case indeed. I'm just not very trendy, so I guess this is the game trying to remind me of that. Kind of rude. But this is the inventor. He's trying to get us on the bottom floor of his pyramid scheme. So we have to go... <laughs> this is one of the things that is in the original game too that I didn't quite understand. Is you have to walk around Jewel Life and find clowns? I don't know why. I don't, I don't understand why they chose clowns and, oops, this is the wrong way. They're not ready for us. They can't handle our heat. Understandable. Not a lot of people can. I totally get it. Well, this lady has a shanx. We have a shanx too. Steven's a lot cooler than that lady's shanx though. But here's our first clown. How do you guys feel about clowns? Are we scared of clowns? Do clowns make us uncomfortable? So this is the Pokech campaign clown. Let's roll out a question. Can a Pokemon hold an item? Hmm. Well, they hold the keys to my heart. So, yes. Ding, ding. Absolutely correct. Yes, so they're referring to some held items are more permanent, which is like a stat boosting item, and then some items are temporary, used as the battle begins in certain cases, like a berry. There we go. You can eat berries. <clears throat> we don't want to eat berry. That would not be very kind. Appears we've gotten the third coupon. How do you say that word? Is it coupon? Is it coupon? Coupon? Let's get some linguistics chat going in the, uh, in the comment section. Here is clown number two. Just like Pokemon, did the moves of Pokemon also have types? I believe that they do. Wow, we are two for two? So this clown briefly explains Stab, which we already know about because of my very eloquent explanation. So we're doing, just doing this in reverse order, that's okay. Doing things at our, at our pace. And here's clown number three. It's time to be done clowning around everybody, we gotta get back to work. Does a Pokemon grow by defeating others and gaining experience points? Yes, they do! And in the case of this game, they get experience points for literally doing nothing. Just existing. Wow. Just complete experience queens here on our team. Not doing anything, mooching off the government. Trying to use us to get stronger, rude. Okay. So that's all three coupons, uno, dos, tres. We can talk to Mr. Kickstarter here. And we get the Pokemon Watch, the Poketch. Poketch, very exciting. And we can add apps, ooh, I love apps. My phone is full of them. When I go to a restaurant, sign me up. But one of the things I don't like is when you order a bunch of apps at a restaurant, like let's say you're out with friends and you're trying to share some food, and then the sharing part of that gets kind of misunderstood where somebody's like, hey, we ordered a bunch of apps, so you have a little bit of everything. Or you have that one person who just has to hog all of one thing. Get your hands off my buffalo chicken dip. That's all I'm gonna say. So now we have the Poketch, which we can use the touch screen, which we will not, because the switch is always docked, and docking is important. We can use the R button instead. So that's very useful, and we will do that. So there it is. Looks very similar to the Poketch that was in the DS version, but kind of awkward. Yeah, okay, well, see what happens if we hit the buttons here. There's a calculator. I'm gonna do some maths. Let's see what my favorite number is. Right here. Oh, my bad. Okay, let's go ahead and we have a step counter, which is nice. This is. If you're trying to hatch Pokemon, you can use the step counter. 
you can check the health and wellness of your Pokemons, and then you can see what time it is in military time. For those of you who, I don't know how to get this off my screen now. There we go. Oh, nope, it's just there forever. I really hope it's not there forever because I don't like it. I want it to go away. Our game is auto-saving, which is very nice. Kind of makes it a pain in the butt, though, if you make a mistake and you want to go back and re-record. But thankfully, the game does have regular manual saving along with auto-saving. We are restored to full health. I don't know how I... Okay, you just have to hold the button and it goes away. Thank goodness. I do not need to know what time it is all the time. Okay. So, we can head to the right. Jubilife City has multiple exits, but we're actually going to head up for a moment. Because I do believe that there's an item up here. In this tall grass. Maybe? Or not. Oop. There it is. I see it. We're going to gray a bit. It's a paralyzed heal. In these newer games, they don't have text limiters, so they can actually spell the entire word out, which is nice. We get bamboozled here by a Pokemon. We already have a Shanks, so we will not be getting another one. I have not talked about this yet, so I will do it now that I'm thinking about it. In this game, my intentions when it comes to building my team, which will ebb and flow as the game goes. Thank you for... This is actually good. This is, what I, this is what I was looking for. So we have now encountered a wild Badoo. Badoo. How are you, Badooing? People watching this video. Um, I will not be using any Pokemon in this Let's Play that can't already be found in Sinnoh. That's kind of my weird arbitrary house rule. I would like my team to be entirely Sinnoh Pokemon. There's no real reason for that. It's kind of arbitrary, but that's the way that I like to play quote unquote new Pokemon games is I like to focus on building the team around new stuff. In this case, it's not technically new. This game is more than a decade old. Not this specific game, but this game within the franchise. So these Pokemon aren't new. The Gen 4 Pokemon are, you know, I think we're up to eight now, eight gens, so many gens. And this specific situation has me wanting to just kind of relive what I did with Diamond. Okay, great. Thanks, buddy. And I intend to do it this way. This is just the way that I want to do it. I think it's fun. Nothing wrong with the other generations of Pokemon, but I remember um, there's actually a situation. Oh, this is not the button I want. There's actually a situation, I believe, with the game that came after Diamond and Pearl. Pokemon Black and White, where you could only catch Pokemon from Generation 5, which I think is really interesting. But we're going to do it this way. This is the way that I want to do it, and if y'all don't like it, I'm super sorry, but I like to do things this way. And I will be swapping the team in and out. Now, there's a, there's a bit of a caveat to what I'm doing. You might say, oh, well, what if the Pokemon you're using evolves into a Pokemon from another generation. That's okay. It just has to start as a generation four Pokemon. Like this, but do. Over the winter, it closes its bud and endures the cold. In spring, the bud opens and releases pollen. I completely understand. Sometimes my bud opens and I release pollen. So Badu, your name will be Bart. Bart the Badu. That sounds pretty good, right? Okay, so we have four Pokemon now. We're doing okay. Almost a full team. Which is nice. And I think that there are some trainers up here. They do have that Paralyze heal. So let's go ahead and show how items work. Paralyze heal. Use that on Charlie. Charlie. A little continuity between this and Pikmin. Z. Oh, she thinks we're a weak looking trainer. Well. You're about to underestimate the boss. Last Sarah. I feel like that's kind of a weird way to address a stranger, you know? Like, do people typically go up to children and tell them how weak they look? Like, way to ruin their sense of self. Unless this is also a child. And, I mean, unbeknownst to some of you, children are just brutal sometimes, so. I totally get maybe the misinformation that's being spread. 
The misunderstanding? But yeah. I will not stand for that. Lass. Okay. This is very exciting. I kind of feel bad because there isn't really a whole lot of variety in what I'm able to do with my team now. Just in the early goings, things are a little... A little black and white. I don't have the versatility that I quite need yet to really get my team going, but that will happen soon. We have a decent variety. We have a fire type, electric type, grass type, flying. I remember reading something a long time ago that the flying type was initially just going to be called bird type, <laughs> which as we know now, there are plenty of Pokemon that are quote unquote flying types that are not birds, which is great because birds are not real. So Sharon, unfortunately, is actually a mythological Pokemon. That's right. Now you know your place. Take that. Okay. Let's go ahead and switch up who we want to start with just for a little bit of variety. Charlie can't hog all the attention. I don't know if the Pokemon at the start of the of the party gets more experience than the others with the experience share, or if it's all equitable. I have no idea. It doesn't really matter to be honest. Oh, this is a perfect type matchup then. Magikarp. Classic water type. One of the juggernauts of the Kanto region. And what's nice is that Steven, knowing Intimidate, will cut the super high attack stat of Magikarp all the way down. So, oh no, he's hitting us with a splash attack. Thankfully nothing happened that time, but you never know what you're going to get with such a powerful Pokemon. Also, I did not know that this was going to happen, so... Feeling pretty good. Okay, so it looks like maybe the experience level is based on kind of the level of the Pokemon itself versus their position within fighting or being passive. So that's kind of neat. That's kind of how all Pokemon games are, so I don't know why I sounded kind of surprised when I said that. It's just kind of the way things go. It's the way she goes, the way the road. But we made a good choice by using Steven this time around with his electric capabilities to so take that Starly down and no longer be able to spy on us. So it's very good. Bart is coming along quickly. Very good. Bart's actually going to serve a very important purpose in the not so distant future. So we destroyed his dad's government drones. And I don't feel bad about it. So unfortunately, that rest of that route is actually blocked off from the north. We're not able to go any, any further. That's the game intentionally trying to railroad us away from doing that. There's an invisible wall there, so we cannot go further. There's a trainer that says, mm -mm, this game is linear and you will do as we tell you to. Which I think is interesting that the earlier Pokemon games, you know, they, they follow kind of the the trope of exploration. You know, it's all linear. I mean, I don't know if that's just because that's the way game development was back then, but that's how it is. And things are a little bit different now, though, like in certain games where you can tackle gyms at your leisure sometimes and other games you can't. So anyway, we have plenty of balls. So we will go ahead and buy ourselves five potion. That sounds like a good idea. It's always important to heal your Pokemon. Is there anything else you can do? You can get the heck out of here. That's what we can do. Great. Okay. So the only way out of Jubilife City is to the east. And we can now do so. And hopefully we won't run into anything like Barry. Oh my goodness, it's Barry. Surprise! Surprise battle, everybody! Hopefully you're ready for this! Because it's coming. Also, Barry's theme is great. I kind of wish they would have animated the, the trainers when they start a battle. I think that would have been more fun, but whatever. Anyway, we have a leg up on Barry here. Because we've got Steven cutting down Starly's attack and having the type advantage. So, it's a very fortuitous start for us. I'm not entirely sure of Starly's special defense, but I think this Thundershock should do the trick. 
I'm gonna do my best to hopefully make these battles a little more entertaining. It's kind of tough to do, but Pokemon is very much itself, so there's not really a ton of ways that you can pull a fast one on viewers, but I'll do my best. We paralyzed the, the Starly, which is cool. Uh, not for it, but for us. So that's one side effect that you can use on certain moves, like Thundershock. It does have a percent chance to paralyze the enemy Pokemon, which is great. Steven gets a nice amount of experience for a level up. It's very good. Things are coming along nicely. And Steven learned Charge, I believe that's a, a two turn attack where you store up energy the first time and then the second time it makes your attacks even stronger, electrically. Man, everybody's just, we're just speeding along here. We're just really turning into quite the juggernaut. So we do actually have a Pokemon that's a good set for that. We'll use our newly caught Bart. Bart. See what Badoo can do. Shoot some spores all over this Piplup's face. Give it some of our goo. We'll use the Stun Spore first. Paralyze it. What I think they did a nice job of though is the character models are really cute. The Pokemon models are really cute. I mean, come on, look at that Piplup. Look at how cute it is when it's paralyzed. I don't feel bad. But what par paralysis is important as a move, it will occasionally prevent the Pokemon from being able to attack you, which is helpful. So it can stop them in their tracks. Ouch. I actually don't know what Worry Seed is because I'm not super familiar with some of the newer moves. Okay, so that move is useless. You can occasionally make it so that way the opposing Pokemon can't go to sleep. Why would you ever want, I don't, that's one of the things that like, there are moves in this game. And I'm not trying to be too critical of this because I'm obviously not a person who designs video games. But there are some moves in this game that I look at them and I'm like, what is the absolute point of this existing? Why is this even a thing? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know the rules. Maybe there's some sort of like cool metagame elements to it that, see, and there's paralysis paying off. There's some cool metagame elements to it that, <laughs> speaking of things that are a bit tight, um, that make it like a cool way to like set up some sort of combo of attacks. I don't know, but unfortunately I'm just more of an in-game kind of person. I'm not really much of a, an online battler. I tried it when I was younger and I got my poo pushed in, so I didn't really enjoy that very much, and it sent me heading for the hills. There's a lot that's involved in that, so like I'll give credit to the people that are like really involved in that and, and like can do well. Well, that was two levels, that was awesome, but it's just not for me. I understand how fun it can be for some people, but I'm just I'm bad at it, and I don't quite understand it because that's what happens when you get old. You get bad at stuff and you stop understanding. So Barry just has his Starly and his Piplup, and. We had the type advantage for both of those Pokemon, which is nice. Also, Barry's grumpy face is adorable. Look at that. Who doesn't love that? That's right. The last time he's ever going to lose. So Barry gives you a big heads up to go to Orberk to take on the Pokemon Gym. And there's kind of a little bit of a foreshadowing heads up. The toughen up. So I wonder what that could mean. Who knows? But with Barry, the jerk out of our way, we can take on some more trainers. This is just directly east, heading towards Orberg City. So this is just kind of more getting used to the battling system and kind of seeing how things go. You may or may not have Pokemon that have type advantages or are a good fit. This all depends. Also, Shanks having yellow eyes, I just realized that is kind of creepy. I'm not a huge fan of that. So we're going to use Charge. This is going to boost our electric attacks, which is very nice. And our special defense, I believe that's what that does. And since there is the special physical split, if you have Pokemon that are physically driven and you use special attack moves on them, that's just too bad. So yes, so this boosts our electric attack move for the next turn in this case. Good old Thundershock. And this Bidoof has been Thunderstruck. I thought that was actually gonna do more damage, so if it would have knocked it out, that would have been cooler, but you know. We take what we can get. Bidoof must actually have some pretty decent uh, 
special defense to be able to withstand such a damaging attack. Sharon learns her very first move of the flying type variety. And I feel like if I'm thinking of this correctly, I'm pretty sure that Thunder Shock is a physical or is sorry, is a um, special move. Yeah, that's strange that it it didn't do as much damage to that Bidoof, but maybe Bidoof just has a ton of special defense. Who knows? It's also not the strongest move, so there is that. Now the Zubat will astonish Steven. Steven is astonished, cannot believe what is happening right now. That we are being so OP. This is MLG Pro Pokemon playing. It's pretty incredible. Youngster Michael, me and Michael. Oh, my poor Bidoof and Zubat. Poor Michael, poor Bidoof, poor Zubat. Can you tell how bad I feel? Listen to the tone of my voice. So one of the things that I think is interesting, in this game, you have the ability to walk in eight different directions. In the previous games, you were able to walk in four. You were confined to north, south, east, west, but because these games are on the stitch, you have full eight directionality. I mean, I guess technically it's 360 degrees because it's a control stick, so you can move all the way around. We're being attacked by a city here. The state of Texas is being quite rude. And we're fighting a Krikata. This is a new Pokemon we have not seen yet. It's very cute. The evolution to Krikata actually has one of the best cries in all of Pokemon. So I really hope that in the future, we have the opportunity to face one of them. I don't foresee myself using Krikata on my team, so it'll have to be a trainer that hopefully has it. But starting out with Shinx is actually a really good idea. Steven has the nice ability of Intimidate, so it does cut the physical damage of other Pokemon. It doesn't hurt to actually use Steven, maybe not necessarily with intents to attack, but with the intent to start and swap. Starting with Steven to use its Intimidate and then swapping out to another Pokemon that maybe has a better type advantage or is more effective in a different way. So that's pretty convenient. I don't think there, oh, I did not mean to bump into this lady, but we're doing it. We are doing it for the kids. This episode's all about battling. We're gonna hopefully get most of the way to Orberg City with the time we have left in this episode. Hopefully you're all enjoying this series so far. I'm enjoying it. I was waited, waiting with bated breath to play this game. I really enjoy Pokemon. It's definitely a franchise that I would say is probably top five for me in terms of games I like to play. I've owned slash played most of them. There's a couple that I have not gotten around to, but I don't know. It's kind of hard not to pick up the new Pokemon game and play it. And then this one has ex has a special intrinsic value to me because of the nostalgia. So that's like an extra layer of enjoyment, which I think is great. And I'm very happy to have the opportunity to play this and share this game with you. So hopefully you all enjoy it. Let's see. Let's do a uh, let's do a mirror match. See who's Starly will reign supreme. But yeah, I, this game has a lot of value for me. I know for some people they were kind of on the fence about it because of the way that it looked and they don't know if they want to pay, you know, the full price for it. It's kind of the same kind of rehashed arguments that people had for Link's Awakening 2. But I guess the difference with this game is like this game, I think, probably will take longer to complete than Link's Awakening. I don't. I do not foresee myself being able to beat this game in 20 episodes. So it's probably going to have a little bit longer of a shelf life. So I don't know. For being a AAA title, I know that people are going to criticize it because it doesn't look like a AAA title and it doesn't blah, 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 whatever. It's good enough for me. And I'm looking forward to taking my time with it. And that's one of the things that I, I've already seen certain instances of people showing me or like in various ways like if, if you have the time for it obviously but I've already seen certain instances of people having beaten this game it is 
in the week that I'm recording this, it is a Tuesday, and this game just came out last Friday. So that's one, two, three, four, five days. If you're able to beat a Pokemon game in five days, kudos. But I don't know if other people feel this way like I do, but I'm getting old and I, uh, I don't have the attention span. I think that's the big thing for me is I just don't have the attention span to sit and just play through games anymore. I used to be able to do that. I used to just come home from school and ignore doing homework and then I would just play games for hours. Like I would play games until my eyes hurt. But now I can maybe get in an hour or two when I'm done with my occupation for the day. There's our first critical hit. Games are meant to be, for me at least, relaxing. And maybe powering through games for some people is relaxing. Everybody should play games the way that they want to. I think that's the most important part. Enjoy games at your pace, however you want, whether it's powering through, whether it's taking your time and doing more of a kind of a slow paced jaunt, whatever, you, whatever feels good. Do it, do it feels good. All right, so we've got one last trainer battle and there's an item over there that we're gonna snag from after this battle with last Madeline. I'm actually going to really want to pump some levels into Bart, though, because Bart is going to be our breadwinner for the upcoming challenge that we have. Challenge! Thankfully, the experience all, the experience share all, makes this kind of nice. It is not really necessary, I would say, to make this game doable. It's This is not a... No, no Pokemon game, I would say, is, is hard. None of them are hard. Some of them are more difficult than others, but... In general, none of them are what I would say are are hard. You might have hard feelings about them, but I don't think any of them are, are like brutal in any way. So, you know, it is what it is. It just makes it, it's, it's kind of like a quality of life situation, I would say. Maybe that makes the most sense. Where it, you don't have to do as much grinding on the side, or you don't have to constantly be swapping out your Pokemon and and taking, you know, in, in the process of doing that, you know, when you do swap out Pokemon like that, you do wind up sacrificing a turn, and so you you will take a hit, and sometimes that can be a little brutal. You don't want that. So Bidoof is going to lower the attack that we just raced, but that's okay. Using growth was not meant to be a benefit of our attack. It was meant to benefit our special attack. Bidoof is, has a better special attack stat. It makes the Absorb better and we can heal more. It's funny when I look at Pokemon, because obviously it's a game I've been playing since I was very young. And the way that I played it is probably similar to the way that if you viewers were also children when you played, maybe it was synonymous, is I had three or four Pokemon. I didn't have a full team, I don't remember. My starter was the one that I basically poured all my experience into because I didn't quite understand type effectiveness and variety. So I would wind up pumping a bunch of experience into my starter. And then all the moves for my starter were basically whatever it was. So in the case of me um, being epic, I chose Charmander. And so my Charizard had, had like Fire Blast and Flamethrower and Fire Spin. All fire type moves as you do, you know, because that's important. You have to make sure that if you have a fire type, it has enough fire moves, duh. Yeah, I just didn't get it. I didn't understand how anything worked and I just kind of did things that way because I thought it was good. And I'm sure at the time it served a purpose. I remember beating those games, so I must have not been the worst, but I had, yeah, I had like Charmander and whatnot, Oop. and it was great, Charmander and co. So we've got Route 203 finished here, and then next time we'll head into this cave on the way to Orberg City and see what awaits. Thanks for watching everybody, this has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, I've been D-Mike, and I will see you next time. Bye.